What's up YouTube, it's Fitzpro and this is your guide for the US forces in Company of Heroes 3. Now this is the faction that I have been playing the most out there on the 1v1 uh, quick search and I've really been having a good time figuring out how to play them and what I'm going to do in this guide is teach you about all of the buildings, units, battle groups, and unique things that you might need to know if you are picking up this faction for the very first time. Now I will have subsequent guides where I do deep dives into individual unit stats and then also guides where I go through some build orders for being successful with this faction. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel down below leave me a comment let me know about what you think about this one and let's get into exploring the u.s forces now one quick trick i'm going to show you if you want to learn more about any of the factions you can go up here to uh the cheat commands mod and you might be saying well that's not in my game you need to go into the steam workshop and subscribe to this mod and then you, you can select it as uh, a special rule for when you're starting the game so it's pretty cool and it allows me to pump up all my resources turn off the ai etc and do cool things so highly recommend checking that out okay so let's talk about your hq at your headquarters you can train two units you can make a scout or an engineer squad now i'm going to make it so that everything uh trains instantly there we go. Answer the construction. Yeah, I'll leave that. Okay, Engineers very cool. Here, so now we've got an engineer right, you and boss. your scout. So these are going to be your base level units. You can kind of guess up. what a scout does. Got Reconnaissance, uh, a light infantry unit is going to be fighting. Engineer, you can use it for fighting. You can particularly upgrade it with your flamethrower. But it's used for repairing as well as building out there on the field. I will go through all of those options of what you can build in an additional guide. So look, take a look for that on the channel. And uh, in addition to your, your headquarters, there are four different main buildings you can, you can construct. You can construct the barracks, the weapons support center, your motor pool, and the construct tank depot. Okay, so your barracks and your uh, weapon support center is basically going to be your tier one buildings you can create. So there you go. I'll build those two. And then after that, you can, uh, you have to get one of the support center upgrades. This isn't an actual building. This is an upgrade you'll tech to. I'll talk to about in a second. And then you can build the motor pool and the tank depot. So just be aware that those are locked behind those support center upgrades. Okay, so at the barracks, you can train a rifleman. You can train a quarter ton truck. And you can train a mortar team. So this is going to be your mainline infantry, your riflemen. You can upgrade them to have grenades uh, later on. And then you can have your quarter ton truck, which is mostly a scout truck. It has some uh, offensive abilities, but pretty weak. Uh, pretty good at reconnaissance if you want to use it for that. Um, some different veterans he allows it to unlock territory. And then the mortar. You don't need to really know much. I mean, you can kind of assume it can... Uh, do high explosive barrage or can do smoke. So use that to take out enemy emplacements, whether it's machine guns, uh, hold up in a building, barracks, or whatever. But that's going to be all out of your barracks. And then your alternate uh, alternative options, these are the more specialized troops. So you've got your machine gun, your bazooka squad, and your sniper. Okay, so the machine gun, a really cool thing in Company of Heroes 3, it's all about uh, positioning and pinning down enemy infantry. And so machine gun, it takes a while to set up, but now if infantry cross this line, they're going to take a, a lot of damage and they'll be suppressed, and which forces them to retreat. So uh, you want to try to get this machine gun set up. And then you get your bazooka squad, which is good for taking out enemy uh, armor, whether it's a half track or a tank. Of course, you're going to need more than just one shot. Uh, they do have an anti-tank satchel charge. You can see the range of it here. It's not very far, but uh, if you can pop that on a vehicle, it does massive damage. It does cost 45 ammunition, so it's not cheap. And then you've got your sniper, which is a... a you're only going to have one of those uh, player models. So if that thing gets killed, it can be like one shot kill, which I've had happen many times. Of course, this is used has excellent range and can be used to pick off uh, enemies uh, from, from quite a distance. You just got to be careful to make sure they don't get picked off. Okay, so those are going to be all from your weapons support center. Uh, and then from there, we have to make a decision which uh, which air support center we're going to build. Okay, so you can, or which support center you're going to build. You can do the air support center, you can do a mechanized support center, or you can do an infantry support center. Uh, 
And I'll read through each of those for you. The air support, it's going to unlock the ability to do different, uh, a different call-in air command. So whether it is a airstrike or a smoke barrage, uh, etc., it's going to be different air abilities, as you might imagine. Of course, each of those are going to cost munitions. And then you can upgrade additionally at that uh, air support center. You can upgrade it so that you can maybe make it so it is two strafes until, instead of one. Maybe it's going to be cheaper to do air call-ins. Uh, those are different upgrades you can get there. If you do the mechanized support center, this is particularly going to help your armor. Big surprise. So this is going to repair nearby vehicles. So if you retreat back to main, you can repair without needing an engineer. And it allows you to uh, get upgrades that's going to help improve your armor. So uh, your, it, it improve the stats of your tanks. Uh, it'll also allow you to build uh, the 75 millimeter and M16 half tracks out of the uh, support center. So right now you can't, but the, if you get that that one, it'll allow you to get these two more instead of just upgrading your armored, armored personnel carrier, which I'll show you that in a second. And then lastly, you have the infantry support center, which is the one I usually go with. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And when you get the infantry, infantry support, support center, it actually spawns uh, Captain Retinue, which is a very cool unit. And I'll show you why here in a second. Um, so what you can do is use rally to me with him. So I can say, okay, we're going to do rally to me here. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm out on the battlefield. I'm going to set it right there. Maybe I've got a medical truck right here, a defensive emplacement. So now that I've set this rally to me, I can't move him. If I move him, it'll go away. But now basically if I hit retreat with any of my units, instead of retreating back to main, they will rally to got? Captain Retinue. Now I'm not sure if this Ball is going to be an awkward mechanic because I'm standing in main right now. But I'm pretty sure it'll work. Let's see. Let's so if I hit no R, right. there you go. Here. You can see he's retreating to this unit. So if I'm out here, maybe I get pinned down right here and I don't go all the way back to Maine and I've got Captain Randu's station here, I could hit R and he could retreat back to them. So you can really use this oh, to re right retreat. Right. I usually park him next to like a medical truck. Uh, so that's a really cool mechanic, a good way to win. Okay, so now that we got the support center, what we're going to take a look at is once you get your first support center, it unlocks the armored personnel carrier. So typically in games, I'm building a few infantry, getting one of those support centers, whether it's air or mech or infantry support center, and then I'm going to get an armored personnel carrier. So this armored personnel carrier baseline comes with a machine gun on top, so it's a half track that does some pretty good anti-infantry damage. But you can additionally specialize it to be have a quad mount, so this will be... Uh, be anti-infantry to do anti-tank conversion or do a medical conversion now these are those buildings i told you that if i had got the uh if i gotten the armor support center they would have been, i could have just trained it right right out outright because these do cost uh ammunition so i'm gonna have to spend munitions to turn these into these different type of vehicles but i'm going to show you the, the medical conversion just for now because the other ones you can kind of understand what they're going to be so he loses his gun when you get a medical conversion but now i can auto reinforced units that are damaged nearby and i can also recruit weapons it does cost 50 manpower but that's psh, that's nothing so if there's a machine gun maybe that's dead out here in the field i can do recruit and it'll spit out some guys that'll go pick them up and then maybe you pull them back and repair them all up at the medical truck or as i mentioned set them up next to captain retinue and uh then you can retreat there to do all of your healing needs so pretty neat uh there so uh, that is the uh, your half track, that's like your light light vehicle you're going to have. And now let's look at our next tier of buildings that was unlocked. So we've got our motor pool. It's going to be basically your light tanks. And then we're going to have... Once he finishes building that, there we go. You're going to have the, tr the tank depot, which is going to be your heavy armor. I'll build that over here. And I'll build it next to it. There we go. Okay, so at your motor pool, you've got the Greyhound. And the Greyhound is excellent at taking out enemy infantry. You can also spend ammunition to uh, upgrade to have a heavy machine gun. We'll add that on there, and there you go. You can also get an anti-tank gun. Now, these two things are going to cost a fuel, and an anti-tank gun does not cost fuel. So there's that anti-tank gun. Of course, if you lose, if your anti-tank gun gets killed, your inf these infantry like run off map, but the enemy can pick up your gun and steal it. So be careful. Don't play too aggressively with them, or you can pick up opponent's uh, weapons as well. But just be aware of that uh, with your anti-tank gun. And then you can get... 
the Chaffee light tank. The Chaffee. Now, the anti-tank gun's probably the most effective out of all of these for dealing with armor. You can also use it, people have asked me, well, how do I kill bunkers? Or how do I get units out of buildings? You can use the anti-tank gun for doing that. It's very good at taking out bunkers. Uh, probably the best thing I'd recommend. Uh, and then your Chaffee light tank's gonna be your good anti-vehicle. All round, decent armor unit until you get to that final tier. Now let's look at what those finals here are. Here at your tank depot, you're going to have the M4A1 Sherman, uh, which costs 360 manpower and 90 fuel. A little more, more, a little more expensive than the Hellcat, which is the anti-tank destroyer. So we'll go ahead and get a Hellcat here. There's our Hellcat. And then lastly, you can get the Sherman Bulldozer. Now, I almost never build these. I am sure there's a use for them, but I haven't really found it yet, and the people I've talked to haven't really either. So there's the Bulldozer. He's kind of cool looking. There you go. So looking at each of these units, uh, your Sherman is going to be your medium tank. This will be uh, very good for taking out infantry. Now, it is a, uh, your final tier tank, so it will be able to kill... Uh, you know, tanks from this category if your opponent has some of the lighter armor. But if your enemy has like a tiger tank, you're definitely going to probably be wanting to take it out with the Hellcat. So it will be a You can use it versus uh, enemy armor, but it, this your, your Hellcat's going to be way more effective. Now, the, the Hellcat is very specifically anti tank. Uh, so, as far as where the the Axis a lot of times have vehicles that are both AT and anti-infantry, this is specialized at killing vehicles, so it's not going to do very well against machine guns or mortars or stuff like that. It's very much AT. You can also upgrade it uh, to get a 50 cal for any of these tanks. You can grab that for 50 ammunition. And here's your bulldozer. Let's read the tool tip on that one. Medium tank with a has a howitzer and some machine guns. So it's kind of like a support tank, but honestly, most of the time I'm spamming these two. I like to open usually with Sherman and then add in the Hellcat tank, just because you gotta think people are usually gonna have a lot more infantry. They might have one tank out already, but it's better to have be able to kill their infantry, maybe run away from that tank until you get one of these available or get a few Shermans available. Um, but I really like the Sherman. It's probably my favorite weapon out of the entire uh, U.S. arsenal. Um, so with that, uh, we covered everything except for one last thing. You can build a medical station, which of course is going to be used for uh, replenishing and healing your infantry. So there we go. There's our medical uh, station. It, it does reduce the cost of the reinforcements if casualties have been returned. So that is a thing. It does reduce the cost of that. Um, but I, that is something for the U.S. that is not available for... Uh, I know like Africa Corps doesn't have a medical station. So that's kind of different. Okay. And last but not least, let's talk about all of the different battle groups you can choose from. So at the very beginning of the game, you got to decide which battle group you're going to go with. Now I go with airborne almost every time because I love to get the pathfinders upgrade for my scouts. Uh, that's this one right here immediately, which upgrades your scouts and then they can use their smoke grenades, their, uh, their little uh, grenade launcher and then in flares right out of the gate, which is really cool. Um, you can also uh, airdrop in the tank gun, anti-tank gun later, or the paratroops, squad paratroops. And depending on how you tech, maybe you skip the building. Maybe you don't even build a weapons, a, uh, sorry, a uh, motor pool. Maybe you go right for tier three. Well, this is a way you can still get anti-tank guns. A lot of times I actually will skip my motor pool and go straight for the tank depot, in which case it's nice that I can call in anti-tank guns. Uh, guns. Uh, also, a really cool thing here, the paradrop reinforcements. It does a loiter, so like if these guys were damaged and they're like standing here defending, it w you can set it to uh, to loiter over this and they will circle ahead and replenish your troops. So whether you're in battle or back trying to repair and maybe you don't have a medical truck yet or just really you're about to lose a unit and you want to reinforce them, that's an easy way you can quickly uh, help them out. And then you can do carpet bombing runs, uh, dual strike. You can drop supply, ammunition, recon loiter, and smoking bomb. But that's pretty much everything there from the airborne. That's my favorite personally. Another one I do like, uh, the, the armored battle group. This could be good if you really know you're going to be going heavy on your armor or you just want to be able to take those tank wars and maybe don't want to rely on as many bazookas or something like that. Um, the key thing here in the armored battle group, you can get the veterancy crew, which is going to... Uh, all of your units, they get a veterancy over time, which gives them some of these different abilities, right? But imagine if I start and I already have that level one veterancy, suddenly that quarter ton 
can unlock capture territory immediately at the beginning of the game. So that's a pretty cool upgrade. You can also go for assault engineers to upgrade your engineers and make them a little beefier. I've tried them. Uh, it, it's very hard to skip this a lot of times, but of course for anyone there's any strategy you can come up with The recovery vehicle is super fun with this you can rep you if there's a burnt-out tank You can go and you spend fuel, but you can slowly recover that tank and actually you can even steal enemy tanks Which is gonna be really fun, which is why you typically want to kill the burnt-out tanks if you can You also get field repair so they auto repair and then war machine is gonna reduce the manpower of all your vehicles So you can get I've actually cheated. I usually you have a hundred pop cap so you can get over a hundred uh, or you, your vehicles take less so you can uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're talking manpower. It costs less of this manpower, right? Uh, talking about uh, population cost right here strength and steel I got ahead of myself reduces how much a tank actually costs fast deploy makes your tanks train faster I do this a lot of time because usually it gets to a point of like I just want to get my armor out as quick as possible And sometimes being the first one with armor on the field can really sway the battle So a lot of times I'll go for this if I go for armored seek and destroy it globally in increases the vehicle speed rate of fire and accuracy while active So it's kind of like if you got a big tank battle you can activate this M8 Scott, this is basically a howitzer uh, armored vehicle you can use on your back line. And then you can call in the Sherman combat group. It's going to give you a, a Sherman along with a rifle squ squad uh, escort. Okay, so that's the armored battle group. And last but not least, we've got the special operations battle group. Now this one on the left side, you get the weasel. You can instantly call this one in and let's... We'll just go with that for now. You can instantly call on the weasel, and then he can, you can go t t capture points with this uh, at the very beginning. It is a very quick. It's, you know, so maybe you don't want to go and train an actual, you know, the, the quarter ton truck. You can go with the weasel right away, and then you can also upgrade it to get, a, it doesn't have any base combat abilities, but you can upgrade it to have a, a machine gun, uh, or, or also drop vehicles out on the field, or, or weapons out on the field later. So it's kind of a cool little building, uh, call in you can also do the weasel assault team which deploys a weasel along with the engineer squad armed with the m2 flame flare but that costs one command point so maybe you can do this one at the beginning you'd have to wait for that one you can mark a vehicle which is going to make them cause more damage you can designate a dual strafing run so it's kind of like an air you have an airstrike ability dual strafing uh, run then you can call in the sherman whiz bang so this is your uh, long range rd shelling so you can if it shoots off some rockets and you can maybe hit an emplacement in the middle of the map on the right side, you can go for rating flares, which is going to designate a flare barrage at the target, so you can see them. Smoke screen. This is I use this a lot of times. Uh, you also have this one available with the, the air front. group uh, to maybe if I'm pinned down, or if I run an advanced to the position that I know has got a machine gun or a bunker, I can smoke them. Could be very useful. Uh, commando squad. That's going to be an elite unit. You can call in. Let's uh, call that in, just so you can see that he actually runs from off map. He does not paradroop, so just be aware of that paradrop. And then lastly, you can do assault operation, which increases the infantry capture and decapture speeds makes them harder to hit as well when active so you can activate that and then you can do air resupply operation which drops a anti-tank gun a machine gun and fuel crates which can be kind of cool we'll I'll call that in right here let's do that air, air resupply gonna come in you can be on the middle of the map okay so here's your commander squad so you can switch between uh you can go between a light machine gun and a bazooka which is kind of cool so if you're somebody who's going really infantry heavy maybe it's like the special operations group because this guy could be uh have a machine gun or have a bazooka at just a click of a switch and it doesn't cost any resources which is pretty cool you can't do that with your other uh para dropped uh uh what are they called? The, the, the paradrop troops. Which is cool. And then you can do a smoke grenade. Throws a white phosphorus grenade. Oh, this is not a smoke grenade. White phosphorus grenades. It burns. Okay, so this is going to be drop uh, flames on the enemy. So that's about a Molotov con cocktail as far as uh, this game goes. So that's going to burn what's ever there. There's that machine gun you can see that was dropped off. I can go grab that uh, if I wanted to. There's the anti-tank gun. Of course, you have to man that as well. So... You can grab those. I'm here in base, so we're going to heal up as well. But there's that machine gun. And um, with that, I think we've covered all the battle groups. We've covered all the units uh, with US. And like I mentioned, I'm going to have a dedicated video where we're going to go through and talk about every veterancy uh, upgrade for each of these units, as well as suggestions on how to fight with them and some pairings of what you might want to tech towards because you're not going to have all of these out on the battlefield at any given time. Um, and I'm also going to have a build order for an opening for the U.S. forces that's been really helping me out and I think will help you be successful going up against those evil axes out there on the quick search. 
Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this U.S. Forces Guide for Company of Heroes 3. This is one of my first guides for the game, so let me know what you think about it. If there's anything I missed, leave it down in the comments. Until next time, hope to see you in the Discord where I've got dedicated chats uh, available for the Axis allies, and we do community games uh, periodically. So hope to see you in there in the Discord. Links down in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.